In today's video, I'll be travelling down to one of Kent's most photographic landmarks, St Thomas Becket Church. This historic building sits stranded amongst the Romney Marshes and has been a favourite spot for photographers to visit for many years. And I cannot stress how isolated this subject is that we're heading out to today. As you can see, there is barely anything around here. For miles, it is just marshland, and you've got this solitary church stuck slap bang in the middle of it. It is a beautiful landmark, and I think to make things interesting today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this one subject, and I'm going to try and end up with at least three Three compositions, that's what I'm going to aim for. Typically, I've tried to get out for sunrise this morning. I can't go anywhere without enjoying the fruits of gold now. And now it should be happening over my shoulder at the moment. Alpen Glow did suggest that I'll have a whopping 50% chance of a sunrise this morning. And I think this is going to be one of the last ones that I'm going to be able to enjoy. You see, British summertime is fast approaching. It might have already happened by the time this video goes live. The clocks will be going forward, which means it's going to be harder for me to get out and enjoy that beautiful sunrise light with the days getting earlier and earlier. Now I think today of course the plan is I'll be focusing on one subject, the church as you know, and I'll be trying to grab three compositions. Any shots that I get during sunrise, don't think they should count, but I'll share them up on screen now. is so special about Sir Thomas Beckett Church apart from its lonely isolation out here in the marshland? Well the church itself has been around since the 12th century and legend has it Thomas Beckett was himself travelling across this dangerous countryside. It seems he fell into one of these ditches and prayed for salvation, prayed for a miracle to save him from death. Just in the nick of time a farmer heard his cries and came along and saved him. Sir Thomas Beckett, in his gratitude, built this church as a thank you for the miracle. That brings me on to the first shot that I want to share with you today and that is nice and low down by the ditches that the Archbishop found himself floundering in, found himself almost drowning in and is the reason for this church existing in the first place. If we come down nice and low down to the water's edge we get in some beautiful still reflections, there's no wind to speak of at all in the air. There's barely any movement with the clouds in the sky. But what we do have is we've got a lovely reflection of the church in the water. Might have to just bring the camera over to the left a little bit, just to create a little bit of separation between the church and the right bank here. But it's just a beautiful, beautiful view that we've got this morning. I've only ever come down to this part of the world once before, or this particular landmark, this location, the once before now. And when I came along here, it was just blue sky as far as the eye could see. And you know how much I hate, you know how much I'm not a fan of blue sky on its own. It's just flat, it's dull, it's boring. There's nothing entertaining to try and capture, but 
not this day. We've maybe got a little bit too much cloud today, but it's nice and soft. There's a lovely softness to it, which creates a nice amount of atmosphere in the background. As for the first shot that we're taking, just come around. Like I said, I might have to adjust the composition just a little bit before I take the image. Of course, this first shot, this is the only one that I'm planning on taking on the tripod. So I'm at ISO 100. I reckon when I'm off the tripod, I'll be start shooting at ISO 1000 to make sure I get nice sharpness still. I'm at F8, I think for the most part, that is going to be the shutter I'm going to be, or that's going to be the aperture, I should say, not the shutter, that I'm going to be at for most of this morning. That gives me one eighth of a second of a shutter, of a shutter speed. I am currently focus bracketing, so the first shot will be at one eighth. The second will be at one fourth, and the third will be at one fifteenth. Bringing that image nicely together, making sure I've got enough data to play with. Like I always say, in the highlights and shadows, it means that I can play with enough data as much as possible. I'm having to readjust here because my legs are going to sleep. It's getting painful down this low, but what a location. It's just beautiful, so peaceful around here as well. No one around either. I've got this place all to myself this morning. A couple of sheep over on the right, which gives me potentially another type of subject to shoot if I want. But yeah, I think after this image, I'll start going a little bit more handheld, just walking around, seeing what works, what doesn't. And of course, then it'll be deciding what my other two compositions will be, what other two shots that I decide to go through, walk you through and ultimately share. But I'll put the first one up on screen now. If ever you're down this way and you want to come along to Sir Thomas Beckett Church, then I really do advise that you make the stop down here. There's not too much to shoot, like I say, but even just a couple of pictures, just to say you kind of get it in your portfolio, then why not? As I've already said though, there are a lot of sheepies around here, so be careful where you walk. The doo-doos are like landmines. So I guess the next question is, who was Sir Thomas Beckett? Well, he was Archbishop of Canterbury, which made him head of the Church of England and lived until 1170. He was made a martyr, assassinated by four knights at his home back in Canterbury, not here at this church. Beckett, having ruffled a few feathers at court, caused the king at the time, Henry II, to exclaim, will no one rid me of this turbulent priest? Unfortunately, our four knights took the king's comment as a bit of a royal command and went and dispatched Beckett forthwith. Not the best of endings to what had started as a strong friendship between Archbishop and King. Yeah, I think this, this spot here is where I'm thinking of for the second shot of the church. It's nice because we've still got a, a nice amount of light just over on that right hand side. Still lovely amount of softness. And of course we've almost got a break with some light over on the left as well. But what I like about this shot is I'm down nice and low once again. I've got the ditch going off to the left and I've got the ditch going off to the right and I've got the pathway or kind of, can you call it a pathway? But I've got the pathway kind of leading you around, which will take you around to the church in the mid ground a little bit, really. And what I'm kind of liking here is these two, it's mainly these two ditches. They're creating a little bit of a V. I'm not doing some exercises. They're creating a bit of a V. One's going that way, one's going that way. So they're creating a V around the church itself. So this one might end up being a bit more of a panorama to make sure that I get everything in the scene how I want it to. But let me spring round. What we can do is I can put the live view up on screen so you can just see what it is that I'm talking about. 
So the first shot that I'm thinking of, I'm in more position here where I am now. So like I say, you've got the ditch leading you off over to the left. I can then pan around. And my second shot is leading you over towards the second ditch. And like I say, it's just creating this nice little bit of a V in the shot. I might even get adjust my viewpoint, how I'm kind of viewing the scene really. Maybe get down, uh, it's a difficult one because I'm just getting crouching down now. And if I crouch down and I'm losing the right hand ditch, I'm losing, losing the right hand V. I think that's where I'm going to have to exposure bracket this particular image. Because like I say, we've got some lovely soft light over on the left, but lovely soft light over on the right. We've got our first bridge, our left hand bridge, just off in the background. Unfortunately, I've just noticed we've got our second bridge, the one on the right, just appearing round. So I might even have to think about coming around this way. No, I don't think that's going to work. The second bridge is something I might just have to end up working with, dealing with. It might be just that thing where I don't love it being there, but I've got no choice in the matter because I like this shot as a whole. I took this shot last time I came here a couple of years ago. Wasn't a fan of how it turned out then, so it's this type of shot where I like it. It was at the back of my mind when I was on the way here, and I want to make, I want to make sure that I do it justice this time around. So if I'm able to, here's that shot. managed to get a tractor in the shot with the church just over in the background. Not a bad scene with the road leading off. Don't think it's going to be one of the three though, but still a good shot to capture. It's all about as well trying to get something different. Okay, so third and final shot that I think I'm going for today. And unfortunately, I think I've jinxed myself with that first shot where I was talking about, oh, there's so much nice softness, there's a nice amount of cloud, there's a nice amount of sky. Well, now all of a sudden all we've got is cloud with just the faintest amount of light in the sky above, and it just kind of creates a bit of a moody, almost mystical look to the scene. Almost looks like it wants to be foggy in the background, and it isn't. But what I wanted to try and do was, as well as getting the classic shots here at the location, of course a location like this one, like Bodium Castle when I've been there before and I've said the same thing, there's only so many shots you can get and there's only so much difference that you can find to what's been done before, otherwise you're just going back and capturing what people have really, what realistically has already been achieved. And I thought I'd come to the back here because of course you can tell springs here now because we're going to get this, we're getting this lovely blossom on the hedgerows around the area. And we've of course got this footpath sign here in the background, in the, over on the right of the scene. And of course in the background, we've got our church and we've got our causeway bridge. Now I'm thinking I could try and get something nice and tight with the shot here, which gets the footpath sign and the hedgerows and maybe even a vertical shot because I then get a little bit of gate there's a little bit of gate over here on the right you probably can't see it and hopefully I didn't step out of shot then so I've got a couple of options here and hopefully this creates a little bit hopefully this means that I come away with something that's a little bit different to what has been captured before what's been thought of before and then of course we've got some we've even got some sheep over on the right. You know how much I've enjoyed capturing sheep today where possible. So yeah, this one's going to be a bit of a test. I think I'll end up, this is going to be one composition that I share, but I think there's going to be a couple of images that I'm going to have to take just to experiment, just to say, see what I like, see what works, what doesn't work. And then it'll be a case of checking back in Lightroom. Is this, is this allowed? Is this allowed? Am I cheating? By taking multiple shots, because multiple, it's, it's more than one composition, but it's a scene as a whole. 
So am I loud? Am I not loud? Am I loud? Am I? Sheep? Sheep? Am I, I don't know what, who, who am I talking to? I'm the only one out here. And the sheep aren't going to let me know. Bah. Yep. yep, they tell me it's okay. They've told me it's okay. So I'll take a couple of shots. I'll check them out in Lightroom. And I'll put one, I might even put two or three or four, five. But I'll put a couple up on screen for you to see. And you can let me know in the comments which one you prefer. And I think on that note, it's time I bring this brilliant location, this amazing landmark to a close. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have done, if you can hit that like button, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And if you can hit the subscribe button, help me out with the algorithm. It's so much appreciated. But for now, you take care. I'll see you on the next one. It's bye from me.